Hi, and thanks for checking out my channel. My name is Hannah, and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here you'll find content all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of three. And today, we're going to talk about how I structure our homeschool days. Hey guys, all right, so to start out with, today's video is a collaboration with Sarah over at Evans Homeschool Adventure and Hannah over at Jewish Education at Home. I will link to their channels and their videos that are part of this collaboration in the description box below. So be sure to pop on over to their channels and check out what they have to say on the topic of structuring our homeschool days once you have finished watching my video here. All right, now let's dive in and get started. Okay, structuring our homeschool days. Hot topic, I know. How do you do it? What works? You know, it's we're kind of at that point in the year where a lot of newer homeschoolers or even veteran homeschoolers like myself are kind of like, wait, this isn't working or this was working before, but now it's not working. Like what's happened? What's changed? Oh my gosh, we have to change something. So this is a great opportunity to check out how some different families have structured their homeschool days. And that's why we decided to do this collaboration for you. Okay, so the way that I am going to set up this video is first I am going to go through and show you how I set up our weekly to-do list. So basically it's all of the goals, everything that I want to get accomplished this week with my children. I'll show you how I set that up. And then in the second part of this video, I will go through an actual day and we'll see how it actually plays out. So that way you can see kind of how it all really comes together after I've told you what I do. All right, let's dive in. Okay, now I've talked about our clipboards before, so I'm just gonna briefly go over kind of how I set up our clipboards because this is our weekly goals for the week. So I have one of these for each of my school age children, and this is just set up day one, two, three, and four. I don't do like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or anything like that because I don't necessarily know what days we're gonna be doing homeschool this week. Uh, right now I'm filming this part of the video on a Sunday. Normally I would start homeschooling already this week. I just don't know that that's really gonna happen today. We're totally not feeling it. So we're gonna start this week on a Monday. So anyways, to give me the, that flexibility and lack of pressure on me as the homeschool facilitator, whatever you wanna call the homeschool mom, I just say day one, two, three, and four. And I do set it up as a four day week, again, to give us a little bit more flexibility if we decide to take a Tuesday off because you know, nature group ran long and we couldn't get it together in the morning, whatever. Four day week works really well for us. Okay, so the way that this is actually set up, we're just gonna look at day one here. So to start out with, I list, so from here all the way down to here is everything that goes with our actual curriculum. We are using Build Your Library. So I'll just go to day one of our Build Your Library curriculum and I'll write everything down. Side note, Build Your Library is a five day a week curriculum. I just crunched that down by just condensing it a little bit, doing a little bit extra, mainly the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday part so that we have a little bit of a lighter Monday to go into the week and a little bit of a lighter Friday to give us more flexibility if we don't finish everything. Continuing on, the next thing I add after that onto our checklist, after I've added all the items from our curriculum, are math seeds. This is what we're using for math right now for my children. So I just write math seeds on there. And as long as we do it about three times a week, I'm happy. I go ahead and write it every day just so I can keep track of what we're doing or not doing, just so that I know what to kind of push. But my kids love math seeds, it's usually not an issue. Next on the list, I add bright beginnings. This is our Hebrew. So I just put the page numbers for whatever lesson we need to cover that day. And then the final thing that I will add to our list, these final two items here are for our darts, which is part of the Brave Writer Language Arts Program. That is what we are using predominantly for our language arts. So I just go ahead and put on whatever assignment we need to do for our dart that day. Down here in this corner, I just have this little totally separate, it doesn't mean that it's going with that day necessarily, but it's just a little checklist that I wanna get done of these certain items at some point during our week. So I've got movie night, nature outing, and poetry tea time. Those are all part of the Brave Writer lifestyle. And they're again, just things that I wanna get done at some point during the week. Once we've done it, I check it off and I know that we've covered it. The final part of that list says Parsha and that is just going through the weekly Torah portion with my kids. And I know that to me, that means reading that section in the Rabbi Jerval Parsha books and discussing with my children. Again, as long as we get those things done at some point during the week, I'm thrilled. The final thing that I have down here is what we're working on for our big month long writing project, which is also part of the Brave Writer Language Arts Program. So I just put down here at the bottom what I want to do this week for that particular month long writing project that we're working on. 
Okay, so you see that it's just all set up, super easy, super simple to do, and I can just put my check marks, I've got little check boxes all along here, and then as we go, I can do the check boxes. So, if we have rushed through a whole day and my kids are still raring to go, I might start on the next day and just not tell them that it's the next day. If we're really not having it, then I'll stop what we're doing and pick it up the next day. Again, with the four day school week, it gives us a little bit more flexibility to stretch out to five or six days if we need to. So that's why I do it this way. Okay, so now that you guys know how we do the to-do list, let's talk a little bit more about structuring the day itself. So my kids do sleep in as late as they want, but they tend to wake up at fairly reasonable times. Lately, they've been waking up at 7, 7.30 in the morning. I don't really know where this is coming from, but we're rolling with it. It does mean that we get done with our schoolwork part of the day a lot sooner, and that's fantastic. It leaves us a lot more time to play and things in the afternoon, go explore nature, jump on the trampoline, all things that are very important to my kids' lives and education, so I'm totally cool with that. But basically, we'll wake up, we'll have some breakfast, and then I'll be like, who wants to get started on school first? So I have two school aged children. And so wh whoever, whichever of those kids wants to get started first, will come in and we'll just start going down this checklist. Now we don't just go down in order. I'll look at it with my kids and say, what do you want to do first? And we'll go from there. Cause I do want my kids to have choices in their education. I do want them to feel like they have some control over it. And why shouldn't they make choices? It's a simple choice that I can give my kids and that's awesome. So then once we've got that list done, and we usually do it in one sitting because it's not so much stuff. It usually gets done in one sitting. If they need a break in between, if they're kind of like, I'm super done, then I'll be like, you know what? Go jump on the trampoline, go run around the backyard, go play with your Legos, go do something else awesome, and then we'll come back and finish later. What I do always say is you don't get to sit around and watch TV or play games on the computer or anything like that until the checklist is done. Other than that, I'm pretty super flexible. Now, once the schoolwork is done, like I said, they're free to do whatever they want. If they wanna sit around and watch TV, great. If they wanna go play outside, great. I'm pretty down with whatever. A lot of times they'll pick up their own projects, whether it's building something awesome out of Legos. My son is really into creating his own science experiments lately. Sometimes we'll do some cooking together. All of these things are still completely educational and awesome. And so those things fit into our lives in a little bit more of an unschooling manner, but I feel better on my end if we get through our homeschool checklist. So basically the structure of our day is we start in the morning that's pretty structured and then in the afternoon it's pretty unstructured, but in a pretty awesome way. So that's all I'm gonna say about how we're structuring our day. Now I'm gonna turn the camera off and tomorrow morning when I wake up, I will turn the camera back on. You will see it here in about five seconds and you will actually see how the day plays out of our structured slash unstructured day. <laughs> All right, see you in a moment. All right, good morning. We're now day two of this video. So I just uh, finished cleaning up breakfast for the kids. We all woke up around 8 a.m. It is almost 9.30 now. Everybody is dressed. We made some pancakes for breakfast. They're just kind of off playing on their own. And now I'm gonna go see who wants to do school and if we can get that going. Okay, who wants to do school, guys? Not me. You do? Great. Let's go. Come on. Are you gonna stay here and play Legos? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm grabbing my daughter's clipboard with all of her assignments set up just the same way as my son's. And one thing I can go ahead and mark off is that we did a nature outing yesterday, so I can go ahead and mark that one off. And now I can just go to her day one and gather all of the books and materials that we need for that, which they're pretty much all just stacked over here. And I just need to grab the ones that we need for today and set them out in front of her for her to choose. Okay, what do you wanna to do today? We've got to read a story in this book. We've got your notebook to work on. We've got to read about some kids in this book, and we've got some poetry to read here. Can we do poetry tea time while we read that? How about poetry hot chocolate time this afternoon? Okay. Then this will be last. Yes. The poetry will be last. So I'll so I choose this. You choose that? Okay. So 
home, my daughter got to work on her language arts notebook. This is one of her favorite things, so she often chooses to do a notebook first. And then when we were finished with that, I set out her books again. She made another choice, and we started to work on that one. Okay, so my daughter and I have finished up everything that she needs to do except for her poetry. And since she requested poetry tea time, which I asked if she would like to have poetry hot cocoa time because, you know, yeah. it is cold outside today. We're going to save that until a little bit later this afternoon just as kind of a fun treat for everyone. So what we're doing now is my son just came in and conveniently asked if he could start school. So that was lucky. So I gathered all of his books together that he needs to go through today. Grabbed his clipboard and went ahead and marked off his nature time that we did yesterday and also that we have read this section of the prairie thief already because we got way ahead on prairie thief weeks ago and yeah now we can just kind of get started on his list so you can see my son here flipping through his pile of workbooks and books and everything to choose what he'd like to do first and once he made a choice we went ahead and started working on that together Once we were finished with that, I was able to mark off what we had just completed while he looked back through his pile to figure out what he wanted to do next. Now nothing there sounded quite super appealing to him, so I pulled out some of the other work that we did need to get through that wasn't book work. Uh, we had to do some copy work, working on a poetry, and some map work. He decided pretty quickly on the map work, and so he got started on that, and while he did that, I read to him from his history book. Okay, so my son is working on some copy work right now. We've gotten through most of his school, which is fantastic. We just have a few more things to do left. He's kind of ready for a break though. So it's, what is it? It's about 1030 in the morning right now. So what I'm going to do is set up our poetry hot cocoa time. My son wants to go ahead and recite his poem that he's been working on the past few weeks today. We had it scheduled for Friday, so if we get that done today, we can knock off all the poetry for the rest of the week and just not do it, so that's kind of fantastic. What else? Yes, my daughter needs to do her poetry reading. Just, I read poems to her, so that'll be part of our poetry tea time. And yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. So I'm just gonna set up our poetry tea time, which is poetry hot cocoa time today because it is cold out and we have hot cocoa with cream marshmallows and things like that. Okay, so while my son's working on his copy work, I'm gonna do that. That'll give us a nice little break and hopefully we can jump in, finish the last few things of school, and be done with school and time to start making lunch. My son had a long copy work today, so I knew he was not going to finish it in one sitting. So I was pretty happy that we were able to start it before our hot cocoa tea time so that he could finish it later on. So I got to work making that hot cocoa. I wanted to, like I said, make it super special. So marshmallows and whipped cream, and then I added some M&Ms on top just to make it extra special. This is all just super tiny things that I can do to make education so much fun for my kids, especially topics that are a little bit more difficult, like poetry. The kids came running when I called them for our hot cocoa tea time, and I got to read our poetry, and my son did his. Okay, poetry tea time was a huge success. My son did recite his poem. He did amazing. He's going to recite it again tonight for my husband. I'm pretty stoked about that. It was just so fun to see how excited he was. This was the longest poem that he has memorized, and he had a lot of trepidation going into this. Like He was really not sure that he could do it, but he did. So this was a big confidence booster as far as memorization goes. Okay, huge success for the day. Like if nothing else goes well today, I'm okay because we just had that happen. Okay, but we are still going to continue on our day. It is close to 11 o'clock right now. The kids are still enjoying their hot cocoa nice and slowly. I'm gonna let them all take a break. I'm gonna work on some lunch for myself and then I can work on some lunch for them. They eat a little bit later. I like to eat earlier so that I can actually eat my food. <laughs> Imagine that, you know, the mom life. And yeah, then we'll spend early afternoon working on a little bit more school and then hopefully the rest of the afternoon will just be play and fun. So, but yeah, we'll see, I'll take you guys along. Why yes, I did involve candy in copy work. I will touch on that more here in just a moment. 
Lunch for the kids was some macaroni and cheese with a side of some different fruits. We had blueberries, bananas, and grapes. Okay, so the kids are in there having lunch. While I was making lunch, my son finished up his copy work. We had to do a little bit of bribery there with some M&Ms. Though I don't totally look at it as bribery because let's be honest, we're really just adding some enchantment. We're, we're growing the love for handwriting by incorporating M&Ms. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so that was going, I also got in a little bit of laundry. The little kids uh, were playing outside or watching TV, just kind of a little bit of back and forth. So anyways, everybody is eating right now and they're also listening to an audiobook on Audible while they are enjoying their food. So that's also educational. What do we have left for school? Let's go check our sheets and see kind of where we're at with that on the clipboards. Okay. Some lights on this room is dark okay um so my daughter my daughter just has math seats which we may or may not actually get to today it depends on kind of how she feels like i said i put that every day on our sheets and as long as we get to it a few times a week i'm pretty cool and for my son we need to do hebrew also the math seeds which again if we don't get to not a big deal and read two chapters in our current book so my first thought was to go and start reading that novel to them while they're having lunch but my son is listening to the audiobook they're all listening to the audiobook so i'm gonna let them do that and we'll finish this stuff up after lunch okay so that's where we're at right now um, i'll check back with you when we go back to doing some school here in a minute after they finish eating so shortly after lunch, my son came out to the living room because he wanted to play Legos. So I brought out his literature selection, which was what we had left to do for his school, and asked him if now would be a good time to do it. He said, absolutely, so I opened it up to start reading. Now, it may look like he wasn't paying attention over there, but I know that he was because he kept looking up and asking questions or laughing at funny parts and things like that. Had he not reacted or asked any questions while I was reading, I would have simply asked him a reading comprehension question like, hey, what did I just read? Or what happened in that last chapter? Just so that I know that he is paying attention to what we are doing. Okay, so we just finished that reading part for my son. So the only thing left that he needs to do is his Hebrew. And we maybe will put that off till tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe he'll do it later on when my husband comes home. My husband is a native Hebrew speaker, so he's definitely better at that than I am. But we shall see. We did get ahead in poetry because instead of him having to work on memorizing his poem all this week long, he recited it from memory today and he'll do it again later. And we also got ahead on the novel that we're reading for our Build Your Library curriculum. So that gives us a little extra leeway time tomorrow as well. Oh, and we also got ahead a little bit on our Dart for Language Arts. What we covered today was very light and so I just kind of looked ahead and we covered that too. So it is now about 1.30 in the afternoon and my oldest son is alternating between Legos and a sticker book that he has where you put the stickers on the number and it creates like a mosaic picture. It's pretty cool, it was a gift from a friend. And the younger two are alternating between playing outside and watching some TV. I am running around continuing to do just a little laundry here and there. I've got a bathroom to clean this afternoon, been washing the dishes, things like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of keep piddling around doing my stuff and then I'm gonna work on editing a video. But yeah, that's all I wanted to go ahead and put into this video, just really focusing on that homeschool aspect of our day and, and kind of how that actually plays out versus how I plan on structuring it. So <laughs> that is that. So while I've got you guys here though, real quick, I wanted to give you a heads up that I am not gonna be posting a video next Thursday. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving here in the United States of America. I will be celebrating. I will not be hanging out on YouTube and I don't wanna post a video if I can't hang out in the comments with you guys. For those of you that are celebrating Thanksgiving next week, please have a safe and wonderful and fun holiday. Eat lots of good food. For those of you that are not celebrating Thanksgiving, I hope that you enjoy your day no matter what it is that you decide to do. So on that note, I will call this video a close. Don't forget to pop over and visit Sarah over at Evans Homeschool Adventure and Hana over at Jewish Education at Home to see how they structured their day and how that all plays out with them. Remember to share a little love over there. Give them some thumbs up and some comments. Please do the same here. I would love to have that from you guys. That thumbs up really helps me out a lot. It's just a tiny thing that you can do. And be sure to drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think of how we structure our days. 
and let me know how you structure your days, no matter what you've got going on in life. I would love to get to know you better, so let's get that conversation going down there in the comment section. All right, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in my next upload.